Hello, and thanks for joining us today. My name is Doug, and this is the Wired Nerdy Podcast featuring retro reviews. Keith and I will be reviewing some of the games we enjoyed during our childhood and the games that continue to hold a special place in our adult life. I'm talking about the games that are still fun to play, games that you're always mentioning in conversations. Those games that keep you at the keyboard or console or with that handheld for hours, or at least until your battery died, or more important duties were needing your attention. At least my wife understands some games can't be paused immediately and I have to find that save point or that next area to be able to stop. She's pretty cool. With all the hype about Fallout lately and the incoming show on Amazon Prime, I wanted to look back at Fallout, or Fallout 1 as it's known, released in 1997 by Interplay and Black Isle Studios. Bethesda would later acquire Interplay in 2007 with Fallout 3. Both of these companies respectfully have a great history of games in their library, and we are going to take a quick look at Interplay and Bethesda, who now owns the Fallout franchise. When Fallout 1 was released in 1997 by Interplay, Bethesda was known as Bethesda Softworks. They would spin off their game developers later to become Bethesda Game Studios in 2001. Softworks had titles like Wayne Gretzky Hockey, The Terminator Series, The Elder Scrolls, and many others including sports, auto racing, and some flight sims. Now we look at the original creators of the game, Interplay and Black Isle to see the impressive list of their own and how they started in 1983. Some of their earlier games were Baldur's Gate, Bard's Tale, Star Trek. Later titles included the Fallout series and Clay Fighters, a personal favorite of mine. There's nothing like whipping your opponent with a clay replica of Elvis. Just hilarious. The list for Interplay and Bethesda Softworks and now Bethesda Game Studios keeps going and going. Make sure to check out their library of games. They are pretty impressive. I'll stop getting sidetracked and go back to Fallout 1. We start in Vault 13 and see our Vault overseers telling us that we need a new water chip. Apparently our water purifier system is down and we're going to have to go out into the world of Fallout with all the creatures and the characters and the tribes and factions and try to get this water chip for our family and friends here at Vault 13. Before we set out on this adventure, the first thing we have to do is create a character or pick a character. Fallout 1 has three made, three pre-made characters, Albert, Max, and Natalie. Albert's really a charismatic guy. He's going to help you with the speech and bartering. Max is strong, but he's a little dumb. He's just a big grunt that likes to beat people up, but you're going to be able to hold some big weapons. And Natalie, she's all about that stealth. Now you can create your own character, if that's something you want to do, with skills and traits called special. That's S-P-E-C-I-A-L. And it's definitely going to come into play in all the other... Fallout games. Special is an acronym for Strength, Perception, Endurance, Charisma, Intelligence, Agility, and Luck. Now all these traits and skills help you do things such as unlock doors, carry more items, sense traps, uh, get to better prices with the bards, uh, help with your speech on uh, NPCs. I don't have enough time to talk about all the special traits and abilities, but uh, definitely more important to keep an eye on those. Interplay almost had an attribute called beauty, but thankfully they scrapped it in favor of luck. You know, luck is probably a little more important when facing a mutated mantis the size of a Volkswagen. Those things can get pretty big. And those rad scorpions out there, don't even get me started on them. As we look back at Fallout 1, the graphics are pretty on par for the time not exactly the top game today but back in the day it was great all the pixels they're a little rough around the edges definitely that dark humor and deep world building sense help with those graphics but i feel there's something about that pixelated design that just brings you all the way back to those huge clunky monitors those big keyboards and those mice you know, back in the day, you had to take the little rollerball out of the mice and clean it before you could use it again. It's not like the mice we have today, definitely, but the newer mice back in the day had LEDs. Fun things to do would be to take the little trackballs out or put a piece of 
paper or tape over the LEDs to mess with the friends. That's good times, but that's another story. As we get back to Fallout, we look at the combat, which is turn-based. Very tactical. You have to think about your next move, think about your next action. The one thing I did not like, though, was action points. It seemed until I got some more traits and skills to get more action points, I was always running out of points, looking through my inventory, looking for health, looking for more ammo, uh, looking for guns and items. They all use your action points. I mean, the action points definitely weren't for everybody, but mastering it feels like finally figuring out how to use that spork in your instant ramen packet. It's a glorious victory. Fallout 1 definitely isn't about blowing stuff up and just combat. There's plenty of that, but you'll meet a cast of unforgettable characters, from smooth-talking ghouls to shady merchants with questionable morals. You can even befriend a dog named Dogmeat, but despite lacking the ability to fetch, excels at sniffing out lambines and licking your face with questionable enthusiasm. The dialogue options in Fallout are pure gold. You can be a charismatic negotiator, a trigger-happy maniac, or a sarcastic jerk with a heart of, well, something not entirely irradiated. Just be careful with your choice, because in the wasteland, even a simple question like, how's the weather going, is going to have a explosive consequence set aside the action points fallout one is a phenomenal rpg for me and for its time it's a world filled with dark humor interesting stories and tough choices so if you're looking for a post-apocalyptic adventure that won't take itself too seriously then grab your gagger counters grab your fallout pip boy and dive into the wasteland Remember, when all else fails, you can just blame it on dog meat. Fallout 1 might be a little bit rough around the edges, but it's definitely a classic for a reason, and it's the start of such a great, great franchise. I want to thank you for listening to my informative but quick review of Fallout 1. Please come back as we cover Fallout 2, Fallout Tactics, and maybe even a little bit of Fallout 4, which is my personal favorite in the entire series. I know a lot of people have covered Fallout 4, so I won't spend a lot of time of it, but I can kind of let you know what I liked about it and what drew me to such a great series. As always, please hit that thumbs up, subscribe, and check out our weekly podcast on Spotify, Apple, and anywhere else that you listen to your podcast we are available in video format on spotify and youtube and we also have a merch store some pretty cool stuff in there keith's been adding stuff daily to it thank you for listening we'll see you next time